Yo, what it do? Today's an awesome day. We're going in learning some hybrid trap techniques. You know, like AT aliens. You know, like all the trap gods. We want to learn hi hats, groove, drums, sub bass, snares, everything you need so that you can get down. Let's hop into Ableton to check this out. I will put in a Patreon post all the trap drums and stuff. Maybe a project with the whole loop and everything so you guys can have. But let's go ahead and check out what I'm talking about first. I have some key Glock vocals and it's a acapella. And then we went ahead and put a beat under it. And then it goes into a drop. Run it. I didn't mean to play the whole drop, but I was just, I was just feeling it. You know what I'm saying? I hope you guys like that. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Show me some love. Go dripman.com. You can get sample packs and you can book some lessons there so I can teach you on the private time. But we're going to learn some of these things here. Also put in the comments if you want me to break down the drop. Right now we're just going to break down like the trap things. I've been teaching a lot of my students and I've been realizing a lot of people didn't make like hip hop and trap beats in school like I did when I went to audio engineering school in Miami, Florida. I was expecting to be a lot of EDM, but there's actually a lot of rappers and singers and I was making a lot of beats, recording a lot of rappers and singers and I learned a lot of these tricks there. So first off, sample choice. We're going to check out these drums here. Kick, snare, and uh, clap. Notable things about these drums, sample choice is really important, right? So we're picking like really trappy kits, like a Southside kit from Splice. This is Vamp kit. It's really clean. So I'm making sure I get good, tight samples like these snares and claps are really tight. And when I say tight, I mean like really short, loud, not really long tails or anything like that. And kicks nice, thumpy, lots of good low end, you know, big bump. You see no post-processing, just good samples. So this is the basis. Then the sub is also very important, but we have to add some groove into this. So what we do is add some like hats and perks. These little extra percussion elements add extra groove to the beat. So you're going to be wanting to think of these. 
So percussion elements, fracture groove, kick and snare, create the groove. We're going to get back to the kick and snare soon, but I just want to show you the main elements here. Hi-hat. This is going to make everything go a lot faster, add more energy. Also add a lot of bounce and groove. This is a closed hat. We're going to break down the hat soon, but then lastly, the 808 uh, has to be shown with the drums too, because this bass will put you in your place, if you know what I'm saying. Hold up. Oh. Oh. Loving that. This 808 bass is super important. It's very punchy, right? The beginning almost like has a kick to it, but we're using our own kick. If you see this 808, we're also uh, sidechain compressing the kick to the sub. So every time that kick plays, sub is ducking in volume. It's actually not on that kick right now for some reason. It was on the build kick. So I'm going to switch it to the vamp right now. You can kind of feel with that feels like where's that vamp at vamp kick loud so you see the gain reduction gr let's just keep it as clean as possible we uh, pump the 808 with saturation and kick tight to make it even bigger this is before and after before after so Adds more sub, adds more harmonics with the saturation. Cool. We're going to get into the grooves for the hi-hats and the 808 soon, but first, kick and snare. Snare, first off, is always going to be on the point three of every bar. The snare is the most important thing. Everything's going to be based around this snare. Because this is what we're dancing to, right? So what the groove is it. So this kick is going to be placed around the snare. And you see I'm choosing different points in time. Right now we're in triplets, so it's weird. But let me get back in regular grid. So you can see the timing here. Now we need to look at the timing so it's a little bit easier to see. This is 16 bars, look at the bottom left, 16. If you cut that in half, you're going to get your eight. So right here, this eight bars is really going to be the first half. Then you have the next eight, which will be our second half. And they're very similar, right? So if you see the first half, you see how the, how the end has the fast fill and the middle has these three. It's very similar over here. So we're just basically duplicating the kick to over there. So you would make your first eight bars, and that would be your drum loop. And these are the kicks you're, you're working with here. Sub is also gonna be playing around the snare too. So let's see how the sub is going. So keep in mind, the sub is being played like with the kick is going with the kick. So show the kick and the sub right here. You can kind of see these now together. You see I'll add some extra 808s. This one has a like a pitch bend in it. If we go to the clip right here, you can see I'll bend the pitch and transposition to make it sound cool. There's like transition, cool transition techniques to the next phrase. Of course, the sub is in the root note of the song. This says C right here, but we're pitching it up too, so it's playing D.
these little sections have much higher pitch, so we're pitching it up 14. So the plus two, what we're doing is just adding an octave. So we're adding 12 semitones on top of the plus two, which is how we're at 14. So we're going to add these in cool sections, preferably at the like little fills sections at the end of the phrase. So the halfway point is here, and then we're having a cool change at the halfway point, right before halfway. Cool, so we make a slight variation. This one is a little bit different than this one. The end feels a little bit different. We don't have the super high pitch, and then we also have a little bit of silence here, which makes a huge difference. Check that out with the hats now. I think that'll be good. Now, the silence, I'm not just randomly placing a silence, right? It's happening right on the snare. These point threes, remember, are the snare. So everything's going to fit around the snare. So now when you're last listening to the loop, pay attention to the point threes. The hi-hats, like the rolls and fills, will also work around the snare. So check this out. We have a roll that happens right before our point three. So it kind of leads into the snare. And we're doing those tricks a lot. Now we even have a double bounce on the snare. We have another roll right before the snare and a roll right before the downbeat. When you're making these rolls, you hit command three enter the pencil mode and look up here at the top right says one eight you can change it with command one and two change the grid size command one and two you can even hit command three to enter triplet right here so then we're going to be like entering different grids and you can see here you can just draw them in so i click to delete and then i click to draw so you can do things like that and then you'll remove hi-hats. Remove those hi-hats to add like more bounce and groove compared to this. So silence makes a big difference. And remember these main hi-hats, they're on the downbeats, right? So like the 1.3, 1.4, we're going to keep hats like kind of going on our main beats, maybe take them out sometimes, but usually on the main beats and then you'll fill it up. You can even use these little ones, pitch downs, just make sure your voice is in six so that you can hear them and they'll play together. The velocity adds more natural feel so that each hat is in the same volume. If they're all different volumes, it feels more natural. Velocity, you can randomize the volume with this knob. Once again, south side hat, keeping it clean. Closed hat specifically. And then at the end, we have triplet hats. Triplets are really important. Check these. So two rolls with some silence. Triplets. These are all the cool tricks you can use. Remember, you just you can simply make your first half, make your second half, try to make cool different patterns. The more bounce, the more groove, the better. Now let's kind of listen with the vocal. We have melodies too. We'll... So these are some brass, tuba. These are playing the root note, right? D. And just adding a lot more impact. Playing on downbeats. Now 
Then we have a uh, melody that I have here. Put this back on. Cool, so instead of D, we start at the fifth, A. Some of these we have some extra notes on top. So these are basically filling it out. So all of a sudden the focus isn't on the drum beat, right? The focus should never really be on the drum beat. You want the drum beat to like command the groove and the rhythm of the song while well, these melodies and the vocals add emotion and even more rhythm and bounce. Don't make no sense. Listen to how it transitions out of the drop though, first drop. That's how we get it done, that's how we get it done. Sample choice, very important. Open hats you're going to use for groove, close hats you'll use for those fast. Snares, claps, have them tight. These percussive elements, these are like uh, little rims. Should be fine. A lot of these. Southside pack has a lot. Lex Luger. All the producers that you listen for, like Trap. So these samples aren't as big as dubstep, but we're using these for the intro, you know? And then when we get to the drop, we change up the drums to like dubstep drums so that it sounds heavy and cool and nice. That looks like about everything you're going to need to make a sick drum loop if you guys need help with making a drum loop if it's hard for you just hit me up i'll help you with any questions or like i said earlier go to dripman.com you can book a lesson there and you can pay after the lesson if you have any questions let me know you guys stay learning stay grinding don't stop you're gonna play them shows i know it keep it real i'll talk to you soon Peace. The Iron Man.